Today I want to talk to you about one of the most important virtues to me and one that we can see just slipping away. And uh, I can remember back in the 70s, I guess it was, sitting in a Bible study and uh, people were talking about hypocrites in this Bible study. And one of my friends paused and said, now let's wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me just take a moment and give a good word for hypocrisy. I said, you know what? A hypocrite is someone who knows what the standard is and doesn't keep it. They pretend to keep it, but they acknowledge there is a standard. And he said then, the way our nation is going today, there are so many people that don't, they just say, well, I don't want to be a hypocrite, so I won't have any standards. Let's just forget the standards. And we have seen that happen, haven't we? We've seen standards just go away, just evaporate from our land. It's been happening for a long time. But uh, anyway, I never thought I'd ever hear anybody say, let's hear it for hypocrisy. But it's better to know that there is a standard and not keep it than to just throw all the standards away. Because God's word hasn't changed and his standards still apply today. Now then, it's tragic that we live in the world the way it is today. Uh, people are more shocked by integrity than they are by lack of integrity. It surprises people when somebody does the right thing instead of the wrong thing. Have you noticed that? If you find a roll of money uh, in the parking lot, if you took it back in and turned it in to the to customer service, knowing that that's somebody's pay that they had brought to the store to buy, buy their food with, if you took it back in and turned it in, people would look at you shocked that you did that. There was a time when just about everybody would have done that. But nowadays, most people, let's say, not everyone, there are some people with integrity still, but there are some people that, uh, uh, that would, some people would not. And it surprises people. Whenever you notice that the checker gave you too much change and you give it back, sometimes they're surprised that you called them on it and uh, that you are, or, uh, that you're honest. But so anyway, so that's, it's just a shame. People are more shocked today by integrity than Lack of integrity. Let's just look at some of it. You can turn on the news every day and see stories of the lack of integrity. Yes, it makes news, but it doesn't surprise us. It could be the athlete that everyone loved and respected. And we thought, not only are you a great athlete, but you're a great person. And then this person, it turns out, isn't like they, you thought they were at all. It could be the politician that's been standing for one thing and rooting for one thing and then living a life that's totally different than what they're saying that they're for. Or it could be a Christian, sadly, leader or pastor or minister or evangelist that said one thing and held up a standard and in their private lives we're doing the very opposite. It's not just leaders who are visible, but it could be your close friend. It could be someone that you thought you knew and that you loved, and they represented one thing, but then they lived in a totally different way. And whenever that happens, you're prone to just go, well, yep, there we go. There's another one, bit the dust, you know. And it doesn't shock us. It may upset us some, but it doesn't shock us at all. We become jaded to people having a lack of integrity. And if you don't watch it, you can start thinking that integrity is just a false ideal 
that no one can live up to. Uh, but the thing is, if you stop and think about it, you all know people who are people of integrity. Um, I can think of several just off the top of my head that have meant the world to me as they have set examples of what it's like to live as a person of integrity. Now, integrity, what it is, is when what you say lines up with what you do. It's when your private life matches your public life. It's consistency all the way through. Someone said integrity is what you do when no one else is looking. It's different than your reputation. Your reputation is who people think you are and who you hold yourself out to be. Your integrity or lack thereof is who you really are. It's when your behaviors line up with your beliefs. In fact, Proverbs uh, says this. I love this verse. The integrity of the upright guides them, but the unfaithful are destroyed by their duplicity. That's Proverbs 11, 3. Wouldn't you agree that so many segments of society are being destroyed by the duplicity of leaders or organizations that claim one thing and yet do something else. I've mentioned in the previous sermons in this series uh, that these have all caused me to have to look in the mirror and realize how much I still need to grow in all these different areas we've been looking at. And, uh, you know, all of us, we all have a growing edge and the Lord's been showing me those areas where I need to move on with him as we have been talking about that. And this morning's no different. As I look at myself in the light of God's holy word, I see there's a lot of work to be done. And so I'm not just talking at you. I'm not just talking to you. I'm just laying out things that are from God's word that should be speaking to every one of us today. When it's all said and done, what I want is I want to be able to do what Samuel did. I don't know if you ever noticed in the Bible at the end of Samuel's life, he stood before his community and he said, have I lived a life of integrity? If I've wronged any of you, tell me what I did wrong and I will make it right. Have I done anything that was not right according to what I said I would do? The community looked on and said, no, you've done the right thing every time. You are a person of integrity. At the end of his life, you see, they were able to look on and say, you have been a faithful man of God. In fact, what I want to do just briefly today is to look at this picture of integrity from the Bible that was read earlier. If there are any few verses that really capture the life of integrity, it was when David in Psalm 15 asked God this question, Lord, who can dwell in your sanctuary? Lord, who may dwell in your sanctuary? In other words, who can enjoy your continual presence? Who can walk with you and fellowship with you? And God basically answers and says, the person who has integrity. This is the way it's explained in verse two. He whose walk is blameless and who does what is righteous. That's integrity. Who speaks the truth from his heart. That's integrity and has no slander on his tongue. Again, integrity who does his neighbor no wrong and cast no slur on his fellow man. You see, that's integrity who despises a vile man, but honors those who, who fear the Lord. That's integrity. And I love this part. 
who keeps his oath even when it hurts, who does what he says he's going to do even when it's uncomfortable, who lends his money without usury and does not accept a bribe against the innocent, he who does these things will never be shaken. He who lives a life of integrity, the Bible says, will what? Will never be shaken. You will never be shaken when you live, not only according to your beliefs, but more importantly, when your beliefs line up with what God wants for you. Sometimes it's the little choices in life that reveal our true character. When a cashier gives you too much change, as I said earlier, what what do you do? If uh, your co-workers take advantage of the boss's absence to do other things besides work, do you keep on working or do you join with them? Uh, you promise to do something with your kids or your wife on Saturday, but you're exhausted from a week of work and you just want to stay home and rest. What do you do? Each one of these situations is a test of your integrity, which seems to be just a virtue that's just lost today. We're not sure, sure if what we read in the newspapers, magazines, or online is true. And so many public figures have proven themselves untrustworthy that we have a hard time believing them or what we read. Maybe we've seen hypocrisy in our families, among our friends, or even in ourselves. In the Hebrew language, the word translated as with integrity means complete, blameless, whole, wholesome, innocent, and upright. It includes being honest and sincere. And although we usually think of integrity as simply being moral in what we do and what we avoid, it encompasses a lot more than that. It's being an undivided person. In other words, who we appear to be on the outside is who we are in our innermost being. While it's surprising that the word integrity is not found in the New Testament, the concept is conveyed with terms like complete, mature, perfect, purity of heart. In fact, in First Corinthians, I'm sorry, in Colossians 128, it says, We proclaim him, admonishing every man and teaching every man with all wisdom, so that we may present every man complete in Christ. For the Christian, integrity can be summed up as Christ-likeness. I've mentioned this before, and you can see it all through the Bible. The Lord never requires anything of us that he doesn't require of himself. And whenever Jesus walked the face of this earth, he gave us an example of integrity and how to be a man or a woman of integrity and how we're supposed to be a person of integrity, even whenever it's uncomfortable or inconvenient. And as I pointed out last week, he faced some tremendous discomfort in keeping his word and his commitment to the Lord, to, to God. Think about all that this term entails Aside from Jesus' divine attributes, every virtue typical of him should be increasingly seen in us since we are his followers. This doesn't mean that we're all going to reach a place of just utter sinless perfection in earthly life, but that we will continually grow in maturity and obedience to the Lord. Jesus is our example. And to get a, a picture of genuine and complete integrity, I want to just lift up three or, well, four different 
aspects of Jesus' life that demonstrate what we're supposed to be like. First of all, he always spoke the truth. And we should always speak the truth. It's going to be hard. It's going to be uncomfortable sometimes. In fact, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He was claiming to be the personification of truth. Even when total honesty was costly or confrontational, he never veered from it. And yet this is one of the things that is lacking many times in our homes. So often we manipulate the facts and rationalize what we've done or say we've done no wrong, whether it's just little white lies or gossip or exaggeration, blatant deception. The temptation to fudge on the truth is always waiting to trip us up. What causes us to practice deception? Uh, it could be the fear of losing an opportunity, a relationship, an advantage, or reputation. Other times it's an attempt to protect ourselves. And who hasn't tried to escape an unwanted task by making up false excuses? You know, just going through these, I remembered uh, uh, a guy talking about a woman that he knew that had confessed that she knew a lot of times that her husband didn't like her shopping and buying new clothes when they really couldn't afford them. So what she would do, she'd go find something new and she'd buy it and she'd put it back and she'd wait a couple of three months to put it on. And then when her husband said, is that a new outfit? And then she could honestly say, oh, no, I've had this for months. <laughs> but you know what? It wasn't. It might not have been a lie, but you see, it was deceptive. And there is just these little uh, what would you call What do you call it whenever you twist the truth like that? There's a word for it. But anyway, so many times we want to do that. We want to uh, just fudge a little bit and get our way by being in, let's face it, dishonest. Uh, now, sometimes we don't want to hurt other people's feelings, you know, like whenever uh, somebody, let's say, when a, when a wife says, honey, do you think that this, that this, that these jeans make me look fat? Don't do that to your spouse, you know. Don't ask them that. I was talking to a, a guy the other day who's faced this dilemma. And uh, he said he has learned. He is a man of integrity. He strives to be. And he's wrestled with this. He says, you know, I have prayed about this because sometimes she'll do it. And I've learned that what I need to say is something along the lines of, you know, I'm, I'm not saying you're fat, but what I am saying is that those genes just aren't really becoming to you. And so he tries to at least dull, dull it a little bit. I can remember in my own family, my dad not wanting to hurt my little sister's feelings one time. And uh, my best friend, my little sister had a crush on and so he had spent the night and he was uh, uh, there for uh, uh, breakfast. And my, so my little sister had insisted on fixing breakfast because she wanted to impress my friend. And she burned the bacon. And my dad made a big deal out of the fact that she had charcoalated the bacon and that he just loved charcoalated bacon. So the next morning... My little sister couldn't wait to get back in the kitchen and charcolate bacon for her daddy because she discovered something that she could do that her daddy loved. She could burn bacon. And so for we, I see like for a week, we faced burned bacon every morning for breakfast. And my dad started to get uneasy about it. He saw, he knew it was his fault. He knew something needed to be done. And finally, we just ganged up on him, said, hey, you're the one that created this. You're going to have to confess to her. And oh, it embarrassed her. It broke her heart. 
that she had done such a thing in front of this guy she was trying to impress and that her dad just didn't want her feelings about it and all. But you see, his lie hurt more people than just him. It hurt everybody around him. It affected all of us. So uh, anyway, sometimes we do it, and women are bad about doing this, to avoid saying no. Like, uh, honey, uh, you know, uh, I know I said that I would uh, clean out the attic today, but George has a, he just called me up and uh, on that deep sea fishing thing that he was going on, somebody can't make it. And they, his friends, are, they've already paid for the, the, the place and he just needs somebody to come along. I mean, this is an opportunity. Do you, would it be okay with you if I went deep sea fishing instead of cleaning out the attic? Well, if that's really what you want to do, <laughs> thanks, honey. And she takes, and he takes off. So then whenever he gets home, then she's all huffy and not talking and curt when she does say anything. And so he just took her at her word. She said it was okay. So he did it. And now then she's all been out of shape. And he says, what's wrong, honey? Nothing. Is that, you know, but see, that's deception. That's, and it's a lie. And uh, the words that come out of your mouth. Now, ladies, I know that you're trying to communicate through inflection. and But guys don't know that. Guys don't see that. They're blind to all that. You got to use a two before. But so anyway, I'm just saying, just just let it go with that. You understand what I'm talking about. Uh, In all these things, we need to be people of integrity quickly going on. Jesus was always faithful. He always loved both in word and in deed. His integrity was a perfect blend of internal love and external service. He was always righteous. He always did what he knew would be pleasing to his heavenly father. Even as I've said, when it was uncomfortable or inconvenient. And so it should be with us. And as we come uh, to this table this morning, I pray that you will search your hearts before you come. And maybe even as I've been talking, you've realized there are areas where I haven't been a person of integrity. The Lord this morning has showed me my growing edge. Lord, forgive me. And help me in Jesus' name. Amen.